What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and we are going to get into another story time today. And as I promised, we got something a little special for today. So yeah, be sure to like and subscribe and we will jump right into this. Here we go. <laughs> Who doesn't love horror movies on a Friday? Am I right? So let's change this theme, shall we? Lights! This story comes from the darker parts of Reddit. I read it a long time ago, but to this day it is honestly still engraved in my memory. I will tell this story from the point of view of the guy who posted it. This story takes place in the year 2018, and I still can't believe it happened to me and my group of friends. We were on a road trip to drive to the beach of Los Angeles from our small town in Colorado. We were excited as we had not been there before and we thought going to LA for the first time was going to be a lot of fun. Now the drive was over 17 hours so we decided to take turns driving and make our way there through the night. I was in the driver's seat and I was with my three best friends, Stacy, Mark and Bertha. Now Mark and Stacy were asleep in the back seat but Bertha decided to stay up with me a while and keep me company while I was driving. I had been driving for about three hours and I was getting a bit tired. We were driving near a cornfield and we hadn't seen another car for quite a while. Next thing you know, I feel the car resist more and it was harder to steer. So I pulled over, I got out of the car and noticed we had a flat tire. Stacy and Mark wake up and ask what's wrong. They take one look and know we aren't going anywhere until we get this tire fixed. We had hopes of calling a tow truck to come and help us, but our phones had no signal. We had the car pulled over on the side of the road with the headlights on. Luckily, we took Mark's car, and he was prepared for a situation like this. He had a spare tire in the trunk, and he had a jack to help us get the car up. And we were in the middle of a cornfield without anybody around to see us. We didn't have much light to work with, so Bertha helped us by using her phone light. We were just about done, and Stacy said she had to go to the bathroom. But given our current situation, she went into the cornfield to go. About two minutes later, Mark and I finished fixing the tires, minus the hubcap. But then we hear Stacy scream. All three of us ran into the field after her. We could hear her screams fading further and further into the cornfield. Mark and Bertha were running right next to me, shouting Stacy's name, but in all the running I lost track of them. I'm alone now in the cornfield, and I'm still following Stacy's screams. I came across a clearing in the field, and there wasn't much around in this clearing. There was nothing but deafening silence. I saw no one. I saw signs of no one. No lights. No noise. Nothing. I couldn't hear anything or anyone. Not even Stacy's screams. As I looked around, the snap of a twig from behind me caused me to turn around. As I turned around, I saw a man with a sack over his head, an eye hole cut out. He was just standing there, staring at me. He said nothing, and he just stood there staring at me. I stood there frozen. I had no idea what to do. Here's a man in the middle of a cornfield, and he's standing there staring at me. I snap out of it, but before I can ask who are you, I hear another snap behind me. Again as I look, there's another man, with the same kind of sack over his head. This one had a pitchfork in his hands. I take a step back after seeing the weapon. I hear crunches all around me now, and a third man walks out. This one has Stacy by the hair. He throws her to the ground by him, and he walks away. I go to Stacy, trying to help her up, but as I did, the man with the pitchfork slowly walked toward us. I thought this was going to be it. I thought we were going to be killed by this man. There's no way I could have fought all three of these guys and protected Stacy at the same time. Just then I hear Bertha yell out. She gets him with a rock in the back of the head. Mark comes through the other side of the clearing. He charges through and he tackles one of the other men down to the ground. I guess all his time being a football player really helped him out in this situation. As it all happened so fast, they helped us up and we all ran out of that together. It took us a while but we finally made it back to the car. Mark floored it all the way to the next truck stop where we were finally able to call the police. 
Stacy said they grabbed her when she went to use the bathroom and dragged her by the hair into the cornfield. She said the one who dragged her was moving almost impossibly fast. The police went back there that night, but they found no traces of the men who attacked us. They did, however, find blood on the rock that Bertha used to hit one of them in the head with. The man with the pitchfork. They used the blood on the rock to track the men down. Turns out they were part of some sick cult. They had already killed three other people, and they were working on more. I still can't believe that this happened to us, and what could have happened if Bertha and Mark didn't show up when they did. I'll always be grateful to them. They saved us. The other scary part is that Mark actually checked the tire that was flat from that night. He said he found a bullet launched in there. I can only assume that the men who attacked us that night were the ones that shot it. Why we didn't hear the gunfire, I still don't know. I can only assume they had a silencer on there. They're the ones who stopped us that night. They wanted us to stop, and they wanted us to fall into that trap. <laughs>